Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and land on the moon and try to return back to Kerbin. We will return back to Kerbin, we must. But first I want to resolve this Songard contract because I don't want to be reminded of Songard's sad fate every single time that I come to the contract screen. So yeah, the only way I know how to do that since uh, he has already perished is I believe let's just double check that uh, yes indeed he has already perished question I have is I'm not too sure whether I can just cancel it and whether I would incur the penalty or not or whether I can uh, whether I should just complete it I think I should just complete it I for all I did launch a rocket and everything we paid some money to do it and we could do it we proved that on the previous mission so it was a capable situation I guess we'll just complete it I feel a little bit bad about it still though. Anyway, I did put in the mod that somebody suggested that should solve the problem. It's called KSP Rescue Pod Fix. It's just a little file that should fix it, in theory. We'll find out. Uh, we will pick all of them up because I just don't want to pay for Kerbals. So, um, save Bilson, save Jed, uh, Jerdock. I'm used to a Jedrock. Is a Jerdock. And Sidbret. Wait. Um, this is a uh, curiosity, not not the rover. But um, why does it have two save Sidbret, Kerman entries? I feel like that's too buggy for me. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to these two. All right. Uh, yeah. I I'm worried about the fact that there's two entries here and what that might mean for us going forward. Uh, all right. So other than that, the uh, options are to bring green sandstone back from Minmus. That I think we should prove that we can come back from the moon first. I mean, Minmus is somewhat easier, but still, I'd feel a little bit better about it. Uh, because bring, bringing sandstone back means bringing a Kerbal. So um, this is another satellite contract. We've done those recently, so let's hold off on that. And repositioning I'm not too interested in. So, okay, let me build a mission to land on the moon and return. Ah, but I think it's about time that we lifted the main constraint on us, which is the 30 part limit. So, I'm gonna upgrade the VAB finally. We have, I think, enough money. Hopefully. Okay, so I'm modifying the setup we had when we tried to land on the moon last. Obviously, we need a little bit more Delta V than we had before. And I'm looking at engine choices. If you recall, previously we had the Decker engine, but the problem was it was too powerful. So I was looking at the Alpha Star, but the Alpha Star has 300 meters per second less with this stage. Uh, because it's got a lower ISP, it's got 278 versus, I think the Decker's got 3 something, um, 311. And, but the Decker has like 40 kilonewtons total, whereas this has 9. So I was hoping that it could suffice. Uh, the Alpha Star is up here. Yeah, but it's uh, ISP is not great. Looking at some of the our en other engine choices, I was looking at the SS2 engines, and it has the lunar module ascent engine and descent engine. Um, I I'm not too picky about the fact that the ascent engine has one ignition or two ignitions, but the descent engine has definitely more than one or two ignitions. So. This probably ought to be changed. Um, it ignited uh, a few times. It was capable of igniting a few times. Uh, so yeah, that was sad. Because that would have been the right engine, but I'll need it for a few ignitions. Our other option, well we've got an RL-10 here, but that needs cryogenics. And we have, um, I believe this is the Agena engine. And this has a whole lot of ignitions, that's good. Lots of burn time too, not the usual 5 minutes or whatever. And 31 kilonewtons, only 300 seconds vacuum ISP, but I think it might be worthwhile. Let's see, uh, let's uh, uh, not have a mount. Oh, it's huge. Ooh, shiny though. Very shiny, but we can tuck it in. Um, why is it... Oh, it's it's got its own special fuel-y thing. Doesn't it? It it needs erosine and NTO. Hmm. Tough to compare like that. 
So, like, this... How do we even get Arizina and Teo? An SSTU tank, I suppose. I mean, the only SSTU tank is this MFTA standard resource tank. But can it get small enough? Well, I guess that's close. Sphere. Oh. Well, why are the sphere pits opposite each other? Oh, no. But it's not really getting much Delta V. Well, I guess sphere is not the best thing. Let's just go with that. Yeah, I mean, when you take a look at this with... Uh, I mean, I guess it's not very dense. This setup, even though it has less ISP than the Agena engine, is 3,141. How heavy is this right now? 5 tons, and we still don't get the Delta V. So this is a pretty crappy tank. Or it's stock. I mean, it's probably a stock tank. Whereas the BDB parts, these tanks, are lighter. And that's why we get better performance out of them. Which... Well, I'll leave you to figure out whether that's a good thing or not. Maybe it's not enough of a challenge, but then again, we're going at a reasonable pace so far. Anyway, let me keep working on it. Okay, so let's go through the changes. Most of the rocket is just the same. We've still got four Merlin 1A, uh, 1Bs at the bottom there. And that has a surface thrust weight ratio of 1.21, so... Uh, tough to get off the ground as it is, but we don't want to pay anymore. Uh, for now, we'll see whether other stuff works out. Uh, two Decker engines here, uh, vacuum ISP 0.68. So it's going to it's gonna take some doing to get this to orbit, we'll see. And then we have this stage, which is another Decker. And now this is not responsible for landing. It's just to get us there and to start off the descent. And it has a reasonable thrust weight ratio and a reasonable amount of delta v and then i'm using a bunch of ant engines here i really don't want them to have a shroud so let's disable that um, they're high quality um, you know what uh yeah they'll just keep them all high quality and uh, 0.32 uh, thrust weight ratio for the moon that's 2.2 and we've got three of them there so and then i use the oscar bees like this on the side. We do have a possible white texture for the Oscar bees, but I think this is best. I upgraded the antennae up here uh, so that they can transmit faster. They are the only ones that can transmit faster than uh, have a better max speed than a Commutron 16. They've got 40 kilobytes per second and uh, I always want to say kilobits, but uh, yeah, that's a lot more than the Commutrons commutatrons so yeah we're taking them but we want to bring them back because they're expensive though so they're like that I've decided to add these Prometheus control packs I angled them like this but you know what I reconsider I'm gonna put them back up like this and that's because just in case we don't have enough Delta V then the these can provide the remaining Delta V to get back home so yeah Otherwise, they are they were being used for control, but I think this is better. This orientation is a better idea. Okay, so that is the idea. We weren't that far off from the Delta V we needed last time. But I've also added a whole bunch of stuff this time. Okay. Uh, in fact, I think it's reading less Delta V because we're carrying more stuff. So, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe it's not such a good idea to add those heavier antennae in particular. And these uh, Marprop packs. That's the two main additions. But maybe those will save us. And the Marprop packs do add some Delta V that we're not accounting for. Okay, well, 30,000. Let's try it. Okay, throttle up. SAS is on. And... Launch. Oh, ignition and launch. Yes. And let's go straight up for an extended period of time with this thrust to weight ratio. 
We are past the speed of sound. Maybe, maybe I overshot a bit, so we went up a little bit too steeply. Okay, separation and ignition. Both engines have ignited. I actually want the fairings to go first. Oops. Alright, fairing set. We'll basically need all this stage to get to orbit. So I don't know, maybe our Delta V situation is a bit too tight, we'll see. We should still be able to transmit science from the ground though. And then next time we'll be able to hit a different biome. One nice thing about this Oscar B arrangement is we're, we're once again landing on the tanks, but I think it'll save us from the use of landing legs, which of course is an expense. Let's extend the uh, big dishes now. Wow, we still can. You know, maybe I should have gotten more electric charge, jeez. Okay, and... Shut down. 101 by 89. 50 meters per second left. Well, we'll use it. Is this the first time I'm plotting for the moon? I think so. Hmm, that may or may not be good for communication, but that's what we're aiming for. All right. Oh, we were supposed to have started the burn already. Um, all right, a little bit of throttle. And double check staging. All right, ignition. Okay, switching to kill rotation and let's see what's going on. Oh, hey, if we continue it after the moon, we get a Minmus. The moon actually slingshots us to Minmus. That's fancy. Not that it makes too much of a difference, it doesn't take that much more to get to Minmus. Uh, Alright, we'll take it. Yep, slingshot to Minmus. Not very close to Minmus, but still. Then again, with Minmus' inclination, this is uh, pure chance. I mean, eventually its inclination will be too bad for this to work out, so... It'll be very much a matter of timing. Okay, we are recharging. Seems like communication will be good for a little while around periapsis. And we'll probably want to land over at periapsis. Looks reasonably flat over here at least. And it's brightly lit. But I don't know if we have enough delta V to get back like this. Let's see, let's turn on some experiments. But will it take too much Power, I don't know. Okay, ignition. Okay, well, we are in orbit, but we want a lower orbit. Okay, that should be a good enough start. We transmitted some science already. Um, will sundown be a little bit better for power? Eh, that's not too bad. Um, well, let's just keep it like that, I suppose. Eventually, the experiment is going to end. Just a few more minutes. Okay, and we've transmitted it. Pretty quickly, the transmission. Practically as soon as we collected it. So, we're expecting... Oh, wait, it should be recharging now. Um, so... This is not the right orientation. Okay, now it's recharging. Not great, but it's something. That's a lot of discharge. Um, that's waiting. That's waiting. That's waiting. Um, 
Now uh, let's not transmit right now. I don't know if retracting one of these will help. It doesn't look like it. Well, we need to do a burn here to drop that apoapsis down so we can land over there. Okay, we have solar input. This isn't the best orientation ever. Without a high thrust to weight ratio, it's going to take some time for this to slow down. That's four minutes right there, basically. All right, we'll have to do it now. In the final phase, I'll activate the RCS to help stabilize us because the reaction wheel is probably going to be too wiggly. Uh, that said, I'm going to thrust limit the RCS so it doesn't uh, go overboard and use too much too quickly. This is a very small probe after all. I think I want a little bit more time here. Otherwise this seems well controlled. I mean, not the wiggling part, I mean the descent path seems well controlled. Okay, SAS instead. RCS on now. So this is where the low thrust engines help. And the RCS seems to be firing a lot, but you can see it's not using a whole lot of mod propellant. Okay, plop. And that is a non-volatile landing on the moon. This time. Okay, um, we're not recharging though. Soul panel nominal. Why is it uh, so bad on char- Oh, it's because it's collecting this data, maybe. Let's see. And transmitting. Well, I guess we'll boost its transmission capabilities. And it's running these two. Temperature scan done. It's getting dicey. Telem telemetry report is almost done. Um, charge is still draining. It's running the temperature scan here and the Geiger counter still. Telemetry's done at least. Okay, and all right, that's done. Not so bad on the electric charge, but it's still close. I don't think we have five minutes worth of battery power, but the sun shouldn't move too much right now. All right, let me just stop that for now. Let it recharge. Okay, but landing's only half the battle. How close can we get to actually returning? That is the question. Okay, well, we've done things. Um, I don't know what was there. That doesn't seem to be anything. So we've cleared all the business. Right, so with that, we need to get back into orbit and get back home. I'll uh, initially have RCS on uh, first. Uh, or not. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, let me uh, go up first and then start the RCS. So... Turn that off. SAS on. And ignition. And now that... Uh, no, no, uh, uh... You know what? No. Oh god. RCS, please. Oh, right, fine. We'll go retrograde. It's fine. We'll go this way. <laughs> uh, that was not the right way, but okay. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's okay. This heat shield can be jettisoned. I don't know if we'll want to do that, but it can be. And if we want to get home, it's going to have to be the RCS doing it. That should be high enough. Alright, so only 155 left in this stage to start us on our way, but then RCS will have to flip around and do all that. Okay, but first, power. Alright, but we need to plot our way back. And so we need... 
I don't know how much the RCS is going to give us. 40 mod propellant for such a small probe seems like a lot, so hopefully a lot. But no guarantees. I'll fine-tune it when we do it, but basically 364.4 meters per second is what we're going with. Uh, I don't know if we'll have communication at the burn point, though. That'll depend on our helper satellites. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we'll have to wait until the next time. No, we might, because there's that need sat 3 up there. That might work out. Okay, looks good. One thing we've learned is not to start a burn before we can finish it. We've got this Atlas IV helping out too, sort of. And we've got direct line to those over there. Okay, well, it's not going to know that this burn requires some RCS, so... We should start a little bit earlier. All right, retrograde. Oh, wait, um... Yeah, uh, let's release first and then turn. Okay, retrograde. Got to make two different stages out of this. RCS on four. Um, right, that backwards. And once it stabilizes, oh, it's not very stable-ish. Looking good though. I think we might make it. I like these little guys. These are good. Yeah, that's uh, with plenty of margin to spare too. We probably do better to cut down on how much monopropellant these have and uh, use the lower engine for more because that's more efficient. But whoop, I did the wrong way. Uh, I went too far. Um, Prograde, please. Talking away. Now it's a question of whether the heat shield's gonna hold up. Remember, we've had some interesting experiences with that. 25 kilometers seems pretty low, but we'll see. 24.9 kilometers is what we're gonna be testing at. Our current mass is 0.63 tons. It should be a 1.25 meter heat shield. Okay, Kerbin is gonna be in its nighttime when we arrive. So we'll be losing electric charge for a little while, but we'll probably be splashed down by then. Okay, and night lights. Okay, so parachute. Uh, not wow. The parachute has a decoupling thing. Okay, deploy. So that's armed. Retract. Retract. Surface negative. Wow! Look at those speeds. And I'll activate the RCS because we can, I mean, using the mob propellant is not going to hurt us at this stage. It'll only help. We should probably dump it even, but we'll see how it does with this load of mob propellant. Uh, okay, you know what? Unfortunately, I can't readjust its thrust limiting to help it out with the communication, uh, with the control. I can still sort of control it, I guess. Um, is there any way I can stop it from wiggling? Well, maybe a little bit of time will do the trick. Maybe. This is worrisome, though. It seems to be wiggling more and more rather than less and less. Um, attitude adjustment. I don't like your attitude. Roll control range. Oh, it's not even getting to roll. Um, MJ attitude controller. 
I vaguely remember increasing these numbers some point in time. Doesn't look like it's helping anything. Well, I think that seems to have helped. I don't know for sure though. They'll probably come back to bite me later on in some other situation. Because pushing us in this direction does technically mean we're going faster, but it's not that powerful right now. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. Let's see what happens. Wow, it's glowing red. And it's ablating. We're not slowing down. We are slowing down now. Overheat seems controlled. We'll see how much ablator we have. Wow, much G-forces. Not good for Kerbals. Well, it's not that bad, actually. Actually, the uh, the ablator loss is less than on the Kerbal low Kerbin orbit missions, huh? The heat shield loading is probably less too, of course. Well, I don't think we're gonna get communication back in order to jettison the heat shield. Let me just check our current mass. 0.55 tons. So, just a reminder, the, your ability to slow down, get some drag, and also the, the heating is dependent on how heavy a mass you have on how big an area. So basically we would take the, call it an average of 0.55 and 0.63 tons. And so uh, 0.59 tons on a heat shield that is 0.625 in radius, right? It's 1.25 meter diameter. 0.625 in radius squared times pi. And so that's 1.227, basically close to 1.25 anyway. But 1.227, so 0.59 divided by that means a heat shield loading of 0.48 tons per meter squared. So I would assume that anything like 0.5 tons per meter squared will be alright to get back from the moon with this much ablator loss or about that much. That is my current estimate. We will see if it works out. And the periapsis seems fine. 24.8 kilometers or so. Still don't have any... Oh, I could turn this off, I guess. That'll save us from the constant puffing. Okay, recover before it sinks. Recover before it sinks. Oh, we'll just recover from the tracking station. Let me see. Contract. It seems to be gone, yeah. Contract complete. Um... Explore the moon. I, yeah, I guess it's complete. Okay. So, Returner 3, recover. All right. 86 funds recovered only? I can't see what the percentage is because that recovery base at Universal whatever is so big. We didn't get a whole lot back from that. That's a shame. Um, 18 signs though. Recovery of a vessel returned from the surface of the moon. So good times. 147.9 signs. Surely we can put that to some use. Better solar panels would be nice if they're not too expensive. Hard drive capacity upgrades, maybe. All in all, I think this is worthwhile stuff. But what about flight control? Flight control could be worthwhile too. Experiment module. I think everything but the aviation line <laughs> would be more or less... Oh, a docking port. Uh, that's an Agena docking port. Hmm. And that's the Gemini nose cone. Micro RCS boom. Oh, 
You have to make it difficult on me. Well, we'll get this. This has some nice stuff. Radio decoupler, too. Okay. There's supposedly some extra science somewhere in here, so... I suppose we should get this, too. Wow, we get that. Oh, that's a sampling arm. I'm going like, that's not the actual drill. That's just a sampler. Okay, interesting antenna. Big comm dish. But the problem is they're all direct. There's like one relay thing that we already have and then there's a whole bunch of direct stuff. We could save up for like heavy rocketry and stuff like that, but... I mean, we will eventually want to land a Kerbal on the moon and we might need something heavier than what we've got now for that, but we'll see. For now, I think I'll go with flight control. Maybe we should try one more rescue. Uh, oh, let's uh, get Jed Rock or Bilson, whoever's more convenient. Well, Landfill's got a doubler. As Jesprit does. I'm just, I'll take this beat top. I'm curious to see why it's uh, more lucrative. Maybe beat top is in a special orbit. Okay, well, we didn't need really huge changes to our rescue system. The launcher is fine. And let me just double check. We've got uh, high quality and high quality there too. Uh, we now have a larger part count though. So there are certain improvements like to comms that I was looking to do. Uh, we took off the extra solar panels on here because we're not trying to stay up for 30 days. It should be good enough. I added more solar panels here because we can recover those, right? The service module ones we can't recover. So this should be okay for the time that we intend to spend in orbit. And, um, well, we needed more comms. So the option was Commutron 16s was likely, and I could put them on the pod so that they would extend downward, sort of like a Sputnik thing. I wanted to recover them because they're very expensive, but then I saw these engineering antennae and I'm like, well, they're like a quarter of the cost and they have the same range, 2,000 kilometers, 2,000 kilometers. They don't have as much max speed, but we're not trying to transmit science anyway. And they're lighter, cheaper, lighter, same range. Um, Standard quality, seven years reliability, same as that. So I don't know why I wouldn't use them, except they're a little bit awkward being spiky out here, but especially since there's apparently a nine-sided probe core, which is awkward. But anyway, yep, I think we're going to go with it like this and see what happens. And that may be a good thing. Maybe. I don't know. I've dumped the shielding because, again, we're not staying for 30 days or anything like that. So all we need to do is remove the Kerbal who snuck in, yep, and try and rescue another Kerbal. Oh, the lucrative one is all the way out here. Well, that explains it. Probably not even worth it, to be honest, but okay. Um, the amount extra that they gave us wouldn't cover the cost of the rocket to get all the way out there, but... Okay, do we have to actually extend these antennae? I think they're just active automatically. Are they gonna rip off? I don't know. Okay, ignition and launch. Whoa, wobble. I mean, it seems like they're too good to be true, these little engineering antennae. So what's the downside? That's what I'm wondering. Each of these is supposed to have 2,000 kilometers. And there's eight of them. Maybe they're not combinable? Oh, we lost communications. This has been a mess. I'm gonna need to check in the... VAB about which ones are actually combinable, I guess. I might as well try and get our value back, though, and deorbit it. I guess this will be an interesting test on uh, how we deorbit from high orbit. Okay, we've passed through peak heating. I think, as expected, the 
lower the trajectory is, the quicker the deceleration is, the higher g the g-forces, the lower the ablator loss. So the ablator loss on this re-entry, even though it's from higher orbit, uh, is less than that for the low current orbit missions that we brought this pod back down on, uh, where we brought the periapsis to 32 kilometers instead of 26 or 25, this one was at. So yeah, this was a little bit lighter maybe, because we didn't have uh, the shielding on it. Well, we're not going to get a whole lot of value back, but we'll see what we get back. Well, 971 funds. Not great, but at least we got something back. Okay, let me take a look at the antennae. Okay, so we'll have to use the commutatrons, and that was the downside to using the engineering antennae. Okay, well, that makes sense anyway. Okay, let's launch, and we'll see if we can manage that. I don't know if the timing is exactly right, but... Ignition. And launch. Okay, staging. So, Jedrock is right there. Try to manage our orbit, but we really need to get to an altitude where we can extend the commutatrons, otherwise... We're not going to have a line of, line of sight to KSC forever. And even if we extend the commutatrons, we'll eventually lose line of sight to NeedSat 2A. We're going to make this a direct rendezvous, potentially, maybe? Okay, we are in space, so I'm going to extend the commutatrons now. There they go. Well, we couldn't manage a direct rendezvous, it doesn't look like. Jedrock is, j Jedrock is just taking too long. Well, we'll get into orbit and then let him catch up. Oh, Apophis is going crazy again. Um, hmm. All right, radial burn again. Okay, well that gets us in render range, that's good enough. And ignition. Why are we going physical? Oh, we're actually in the atmosphere. Oh, that wasn't one I wanted at all. Okay, great. But our resulting orbit still leads us to have a periapsis in the atmosphere, so... Well, that's all because Jurdok decided to be in such a low orbit, I suppose. Yeah, isn't Jurdok in the atmosphere? No, that's us. Uh, where is Jurdok, anyway? Yeah, Jurdok is in, in the atmosphere at one end. Wait a minute, that's a problem, isn't it? Um... The contracts, they they put the Kerbals in, like, stock Kerbal heights, I guess? Hmm. That seems wrong. Well, that explains part of the problem, but I would then rather meet up with him before he hits the atmosphere again rather than after. How about that? Um... Uh, so we, we, in theory, fix the... Why is it control locked? Um, fix the problem with Kerbals spawning in pods without hatches with that one mod. Maybe. I mean, my assumption right now is that that is fixed. But now we have another problem. This will cost a bit, but... We haven't even let go of the Decker stage, have we? Nope, we still have the Decker stage, so we're good on Delta V. Okay, that should be ahead of when the target is going to dip back into the atmosphere, but we're going to have to do this quickly. This is a real rescue. Jeez, dire situation and everything. Okay, looking at comms. We got comms there, but not really where we meet up with the target, but how close are we right now? 
maybe we can force the issue. Um, not really close, 22 kilometers. Well, point towards the target, go fast. What could go wrong, right? Okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, we need to... No, oh, we didn't slow down in time. Ah, oh, he went really far. Oh, are we in the atmosphere? We're in the atmosphere. Jeez. Okay, well, that's it. I want him to get to this pot, but then we're in the atmosphere. It's going to be really hard. EVAs in the upper atmosphere. This is dodgy, dodgy, dodgy. Can we get an EVA report? Uh, or is that going to take too much electric charge? An invalid situation? This is an invalid situation for an EVA report? I think it's a great situation for an EVA report. That's, that's nonsense. Who decided that? Jeez. Oh no. He's glowing red. Oh no. Don't do that. Um. Grab. Board. Okay, glowing red, jeez. Kerbals really can't do that very well, huh? I thought they'd have a little bit more leeway, but 81 kilometers already glowing red. Okay, uh, no, uh, boost us up here, please. I'm sick of going down. Don't bump into the other pod. So, one, one rescue contract problem potentially fixed, and another one that still remains. Maybe I need contract configurator or something. So, where's the KSC now? Oh, just barely in the dark, but okay. Go over to the opposite side and we'll go for a slightly steeper re-entry, 30 kilometers, and we'll burn closer to the KSC than previous times. So, I don't know what landmark. Well, I guess we could use Mechjeb to at least maybe custom window editor. I could figure out what location I'm over. So surface info, let's have a surface info window down here, and then we'll have the coordinates, but I don't need all that business. Um, remove that. Surface speed, nah, I mean, we can always use the nav ball stuff for that. Vertical speed is good though, and surface horizontal is fine. And of course, if you want to, we can make it a compact, an overlay, that's always nice. And the color of the background, we can reduce its opacity. We could make it a red if we wanted to. This is very configurable. People don't always appreciate that about MechJeb, that you can configure the windows any way you like them. Uh, so anyway, but there we go. It's a nice little window now. And we'll get an exact coordinate where we do the burn at and use that as a reference from now on. This would be about where we used to retro burn. So I'm gonna go with 165 degrees east. And we are going to go to a... And we're at about, let's say, 100 kilometers. Uh, 30 kilometer periapsis. And we'll see where that takes us. Since we started so much later though, we're probably going to overshoot the KSC by a lot. We'll see. It's over there. We're hitting the atmosphere. 
basically at the rude health uh, helipad health pad helipad a yeah right at that whatever coordinate that is 150 degrees west more or less well, well we'll be in the water and it was a little bit too far so less than 165 degrees east is where we would have to retro if we wanted a 30 kilometer periapsis return Gotta say, it's using a whole lot more ablator now. Does it make a difference if there's a Kerbal inside? Does it actually account for the Kerbal's mass or something? Because, like, the pod is basically the same as last time, but it took a lot more ablator, I feel. Hmm. But then again, that was also a steeper trajectory from a higher orbit. And, the, uh, but the, per uh, anyway, whatever, we'll figure it out eventually. Okay, careful to recover quickly. Come on. Uh, oh, it actually floats, I think. I think it does actually float. Which is weird, because it's heavier than the probe. <laughs> I don't understand, but oh well. The probes all sink. The pods float. Okay, well, we got another Kerbal. Kerbal is an engineer. Got some ribbons. Alright, so with that, I think I'll wrap it up. We landed on the moon, brought a probe back from the moon, and we got a new Kerbal. So, next time, we'll try and do a little bit more. I won't overload the Kerbal rescues. Uh, maybe we should land a probe on Minmus next. But, it doesn't, it's not really asking for that. We'll see. Anyway, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.